I've been gone belting. Oh, I think I'm melting. Help me, please help me. I think I'm melting. I'm, 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 I'm melting. <laughs> There's that many cables. <laughs> oh my. Boxes of spare looms over there. Bits of loom down on here. It's starting to take shape. I left you with the loom just laid out on the floor. Doesn't really look a lot different does it? So you may ask, what you been doing? Well, the toothbrush has been out and I had made progress on cleaning, but I've made a lot of progress on the actual sublooms and all the work laying out, preparing for fitting of those looms and also integrating into the existing main harness itself. There's a lot gone on which you can't see but it'll very quickly begin to take shape. So we're going to get down with a soldering iron and do a little bit more. You can already see eagle eye people will spot two fuse boxes have been, been installed into the loom. You can see them just trailing off into the main section there. Look at those two breakout fuse boxes to run the system. So you've got to plan all these little loom operations. And here is the instruction sheet for fitting the wash wipe auto rain sensing system we've already started to do that you can just see some yellow red white and green cables on their own there they're heading off towards the wiper switch which is where we make the connection for the rain sensing pickup a slave relays is installed just here picking it up a sudden, another sub loom it's even got a genuine sticker well it's not genuine it's a reproduction sticker on it from Ford to make that loom look original that's our wiper replaces the foot switch we'd still have the foot switch but it works in a different way we'll talk about that later what I'm saying is whilst it looks all crazy I'm on it don't you worry have confidence and faith in Cortina City we'll tidy this little lot up very shortly right I'm just working on getting the headlights and all the switches working in the loom. First I found the headlight switch itself all corroded up and not working. I'm going to take that apart and clean it. I'll show that in a minute. This might help you if you've got a Cortina because often the headlight switches fail. They either corrode up or they just don't work. Well mainly because they do corrode up. Whoops! I just knocked it over. Hang on. Let's try and stay steady. We really have got to try and stay smart but before we do the relay is also faulty the dip beam relay does not come on and I found that the little coil winding has broken away off its contact I don't know how that's happened but it wasn't uh, connected to the pin inside the relay so we're just soldering a wire on I've took the winding found the wire there you can just see at the end of my finger you've got to scrape the copper coating on it, it's not copper but it's, there's a coating on it, an insulating coating on that, scrape it off with a blade and then tin it up and get your wire on. So this relay's got to be repaired, just a minute to repair, I'm going to get some heat shrink over it then we're going to glue gun it in position. Here's the wiper switch, you can see the top contacts corroded on it, so that's got to be cleaned up, that's, that doesn't work, they're not too bad to take apart and put back together. You often find when you're trying to unplug them from the loom, 
that this bit breaks away and you end up pulling the connector off with this rather than the connector sliding off these pins they tend to just pull the whole lot off and the switch falls apart in your hand but you can you can fix these put them back together so we'll talk you through putting this back together in a minute first I'll fix the relay so soldered onto there gonna heat shrink some very fine heat shrink over that join you can just see the join if you want a better view we'll take you in on the magnifier you can just see it just attached at the end I've got some um, pore prints on the magnifier I'll wipe the magnifier down in a sec but that's the headlamp relay we've got a high beam and we'll put some oil WD on that squeaky lamp too you've got a high beam relay and a dip beam relay controlled by the stalk and the lamp switch combined you need your stalk in the loom when you're testing this because no stalk connected into the loom means you don't get a, a power through so connect your stalk up if you're doing this on the bench your steering column stalk the indicator stalk has to be have its loom on so that all the power can get to the right places however the, the high beam works but the dip beam was not on at first I thought it was a switch but I jump leaded out the switch and put power straight to the relay and the relay wasn't activating then that's when I noticed its wire had snapped but yet there's no the strange thing is is there's no sign of the broken wire inside there's these little posts inside and it's soldered to those but I can't see the wire broken off the post there's a common post the ground supplies ground to both relay coils that's the the uh, outside pin here so this little jumper lead is going to solder to that outside pin and that should be it I don't understand why there's no bit of cable left unless it fell inside and shorted and then blew apart I don't know um, it could have been damaged when I opened it up to get the casing shell casing regalvanized but I doubt it I'm trying to think back if Bramble's dip lights worked I thought that they did so this could have got damaged in storage it could have been put in the, uh, a box without its cover on and then something inside the box has dug in there and ripped that wire out that's a possibility so we'll get it repaired anyway there you can see it a little bit better on that side so I'm going to take that across but we'll heat shrink it simply because we've broken into the, um, the insulation now and then we'll glue gun it because it'll tend to wobble otherwise and onto that pin so repair here for the uh, engine bay mounted headlamp relay as part of this loom job that I'm doing look I'm working on the floor because I like working on the floor side lights are on at the moment because we've got a, another switch in the circuit there that's re fully rebuilt and repaired what I did is I've done a mock-up repair so I know how to film it for you now I just refresh my memory that switch is fully rebuilt Bramble's original switch on the bench so you can just see it I'm just there by the end of that Phillips screwdriver that is the headlight switch so we've got power to the loom just down there and an earth to the loom and the headlamp relay sockets just up there so we're just getting it all going the reason why I'm, I'm doing the lamps at the moment is because we're doing the automatic headlamps on and rain sensing wiper it's a combo unit all in one coming into screen is the combo unit this is the rain sensing unit and the automatic lights all in one box two connectors on it one connector for the rain sensing and the wiper control the other it simply just puts power to the headlight switch it's a little bit trickier than you would think on a Cortina the manual instruction book for the rain sensing setup tells you to disconnect your side light and your headlights headlight wires alright just one wire does it but on a Cortina the side lights are separately fused for left and right and also you have a parking light system when in the ignition you backwards when the ignition is off and um, when you turn the ignition off there's actually a live feed comes out your barrel it's off when the key is on it's live when the key is off that then feeds to the switch and enables power to this indicator stalk which then becomes a um, parking light system so it swaps from indicator to being parking light so indicate down left hand side park lights come on push up indicate right right hand side parking lights come on to do that you only want that working when the key is out therefore when you turn the key off there's a positive feed supplied to via the stalk to the headlamp relay I think it goes through the headlamp relay it has to actually 
and then uh, off it goes so if we're connecting this automatic light system in you need to get you don't want to join the left and right independently fused side lights together so we need to make a twin output of 12 volts so we have to add a relay to this which does two sets of contacts so that you kept independent left and right fused if you were to join them together then uh, they would not be independently fused and all if a few if one side went you'd lose all your lights so we don't want that to happen so a combination of fixing a headlight switch working out the wiring for the automatic light sensing box and fixing the broken coil winding on this relay a few little things to be getting on with now soldered on heat shrink sleeve on glue gun next for that and then take it to the take it to the max I'll just plug it in my glue gun off screen on a little extension cable right let's get this threaded threaded through careful come on round you go let's repair this relay now the heat shrink won't bend the same but we'll be okay I've got to head over to this terminal here only it's very small I kind of can see why it probably did go that way there's enough a little piece that must have just broke now a question of cutting the yellow to get the, the length approximate let's go there and we've got to cut the insulation a tiny spider wanders aimlessly within the warmth of the shadow and he's on he's on the end of the blade this tiny spider just there wanders aimlessly within the warmth of a shadow where's he gone I don't want to hurt the spider oh I shouldn't have put him on there ah he's off spun a web don't get squashed please right let's cut that there trying to do it in shot and also trying to dodge a tiny tiny creature nearly round to the back we go little cut flip big hand in the way shaky hands in the way now shake hands shake hands who knows the film shake hands shake hands I'll give you some good points if you get that one shake hands um, was on TV as part of a series wasn't a film as such 80s shake hands uh, British so there's the clues Northern more clues shake hands shake hands you'll get it someone out there will get it you live chatters Peter Barker gets the mention today who wanted Christmas songs but I don't do them because I'm a Scrooge I'm a Grinch such a Grinch the only Christmas thing I really would love to do is Scotland Edinburgh something like that or the in the Highlands the Scottish Highlands rent a cottage or something like that and uh, rent a load of s servants to come and make your Christmas dinner and uh, have hopefully have snow and a log fire by a stream hopefully the stream won't have frozen up that's my Christmas I could, and a nice Christmas pudding with plenty of alcohol in it whatever you put in the Christmas pud rum is it shake hands time to make contact with the pin your brains are going no googling allowed I bet if you google it it just comes straight up oh, I've ruined it I shouldn't have even hinted at you that you could google that shake hands if you reply, promise me you didn't Google it. Okay? 
Shagan. Just put it into the loom and tested it, and it works. So it was that fault. Why? We're never going to know, but it's time now to glue good it on. Spin it round, get that spare cable out of the way. There's a good point to hit it. Just around there. To stabilise us. Great stuff. For this, the glue gun's great. And curiously, here's one for you. Another interesting detail. Oh. Whoa, see what I've just lifted up there? Right, there's a curious pad. It's a piece of uh, coil winding coming up. <laughs> I've touched the glue. Ah, oh, my finger. I burnt my finger. <laughs> oh my God, help me. I'm cracking up. Glue gun there, don't touch, hot. Right, there's a little pad here. And it just, it's a... This is one of the output pins. When the relay fires, that's, that's your dips or your high beam output via the fuse there. See the fuse? So you, you connect your wiring harness onto that. There's a multi-plug on, on the middle and then individual single post connector goes on there for your dip beam or your high beam, depending. You can actually get them the wrong way around. But on it is soldered a little piece of uh, copper winding, then a factory blob at the end that's broke away, dead ending it. No idea why that's there. Absolutely, because it doesn't even... It's not long enough to be winding for, I, I just, no idea. A little piece of copper cable soldered onto that, then a dead end with some blob. Now, I'm wondering, I doubt it very, very much, that someone's made a repair and done it wrong and put it, the wire on the wrong pin and that the coil broke off from this pad because the pad was wobbling around. But it was going to the wrong pin if they did do that. So I don't know, but I'm going to glue the pad back down and leave it as it was. And that's the end of that. So no, no one's ever going to know why. We're never going to know. The output pin, as well as having the pin, has got inside it a little piece of dead-ended copper winding going to a factory blob. At least it looks like a factory blob. It's well tarnished. And then it just dead-ends. That's what threw me at first, because I thought that's the broken-off wire. And I thought, well, it can't be, because that's the output. The coil can't be coming off that, it needs the input, and the input wire indeed was coloured black and red yellow, uh, red with a yellow stripe. Ground, common ground, red with a yellow stripe, and then I think it's blue with a white, blue with a pink stripe, does the other dip, uh, high beam and dip, then common for both coils. Oh well, I don't know why that is. I've often wondered why that is, I'd like to say, but I just don't know. As Philoki sang, name the song that Philoki Sang on there. Yeah. Human League. I'm going to put this back into the loom now and carry on. Oh, I'll take you through the switch repair. Let's get it out of the way. Relay fixed. Headlamp relay damaged. Well, this one is. All the pins corroded. Inside internals corroded. So, what do we do? But we get our trusty brick acid just off screen. It's in a jar. Marked up, by the way. Make sure if you do, keep it in a separate jar. You mark the jar, acid. Acid! Uh, uh, who knew I was going to say that one? Uh, 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 acid! Now that's one song you can sing, because we all know I'm rubbish at singing. However, however, I'm going to have to have a caveat on my singing. I'm sorry, but I've got to defend myself. Um, Mikey was good singing, and he was good on Popmaster. Uh, Tony, the drunk chorister, was good. I'm rubbish at singing, but I'll get you on the electrics, guys. Um, yeah, acid on here. The spider's all right. He's over there. Keep away from the acid, man. Look how the acid instantly cleans these copper connectors up. Wow. It's, this is one of those wow moments. It just takes zero effort to refurbish your very corroded headlamp switch. And this is prudent to do. If you're doing a restore, I don't need to really do the tops of those um, contactor arms, but definitely need to do the faces and the pads. So we go into both contact faces. Okay, and look now. We're shinier than shine, McShine. 
you're on the jobby on the bench so as my hands touch the bench you get slight vibrations not like Brian oh no who's, who's at the uh, the uh, Beach Boys Wilson Brian Wilson where's your sandbox Brian look is that, a, is that a game changer? Of course it is. You must neutralise it though. I just use a little bit of water. And then we're going to put that special gel on these so they never corrode again. And the thing about the gel... Okay, you still with me out there? The thing about the gel is... Once we've neutralised this with a cloth and a little bit of water. Then just wiped it back so it's dry. Compressed air is also another one. You can blow the compressed air onto this to dry it. Oh, the thing about the um, the brick acid is it's one of those wow moments because it makes life very simple and you get guaranteed cleaning. We've also got the gels going to help us assemble the switch. The Dynax, Dynatex coming in there because what happens with these switches is there's loads of little springs and things. Let's get another one. Is this another one? Just make sure that is a headlamp switch. Yes, it is. If we open this one up, all the little springs come out and all the little contact pads come out. Okay, the sort of little contacting bars. This one is pretty stuck shut. I'm trying to find one that's already broke. Ah, yeah, here's one. Look, see this spring? There's two springs go on here. bit more light for you and here's your little slider there's a slider which is the rocker goes on and that slides on its little pins spring on each one then then two copper contact plates now it all starts falling apart as you're trying to assemble it but if you put the gel on there the grease gel, the Dynex, it sticks everything together and allows you to assemble it all. So you can just, you put the grease in, then when you put your little contact um, arms on, the little pads, I haven't got any to show you, I wish I did have. Um, these, this one's in bits, it's in a one of my switch bags, with like switches that are taken apart. Looking in my drawer just to see if we can see the switch bag for you. I don't think, it, I don't think it's at hand. If I find it later, I'll jump back on. But when you put the grease in here, you can reassemble the switch and everything sticks together. Okay. And then there's a little plastic insulating plate goes over here with slots in it. You can glue that up, not glue it on, but you put the grease on there. Then everything holds together and then it places together nicely and you'll feel the switch feels a bit more solid. It doesn't necessarily go easier to operate because the gel tends to make it drag but it's worth that payoff to have the, the gel on there the Dynax grease on there so you'll never you'll never corrode again so I'll show you roughly what I mean squeeze a little bit out of the tube on the end of my finger and then just go like this look I know that I haven't wiped this back we'll have to not wipe this one back sorry but normally we'd wipe that back I'll clean it back with a cloth and just showing you that I put the grease on there now things just stick to it so all the bits of the switch just all stick together and you slot it in I did that before okay moving on then that we should have all those elements of the lamps repaired now I'll carry on building the loom ah, I forgot I was mentioning a caveat on singing weren't I and I went off track ah 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 seed well anyone can do that and also, certain punk songs, they didn't really sing on them, they just kind of like shouted around. So, um, because of that, I say that everyone can sing, depends what record you're singing. There you go. If you do want to do punk, punk backing vocals, it's easy. You just get angry, and then you can do it. It's not really singing, I guess. But acid! A little bit of our acid friend again. And we will blast this one. These fuse holders here, renowned for going, and so are these connectors here. Probably one of the most common headlamp faults on the Cortina. Bad connections on these pins. So these are a real candidate for your, your contact grease. You can use another one called Connector Protector. It's an American one again. That's pretty good. 
I've used that in the swampy days. So, cleaning these fuse holders and the pins, these are alright now, as long as it's not crazy, uh, crazy corroded. Two pink fuses, these are the correct rating, don't know what they are, I don't know the right, they're always pink in these. That's it clean that back grease it up grease is the word that you heard it's got groove it's got meaning let's go are you enjoying the show so far i hope so okay here's the socket connector for the relay the acid on push the brush in spin round to get right in there get them clean they're already cleaning up nice and then um more neutralizing down foam clean the casing because it's grubby 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 I remember once I went to the Isle of Man at school trip uh, primary school okay went on um, whatever boats they were from Liverpool across to the Isle of Man what made me think of this it was grubby 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 made me think of that why on the PA system of the boat they had old music playing for us okay uh, for because the, the kids were all on the boat and uh, at that time everyone was going around going oggy 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 <laughs> so it was oggy 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 then the, all the kids will oi 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 and then we had a disco in the car deck it was great uh, a disco in down where the cars would park there were no cars in so they made the whole deck of the boat ship whatever it was into a disco and uh, Gino was number one, so it was there. Uh, he just kept playing Gino and it looped the Gino. We'd play it once, we'd all scream, and Gino, Dexy's Midnight Runners, would play again. What a memory! I think I've got some photographs of that trip, I'd love to find them. Oggy, 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 clean that connector, and don't forget your toothbrush. Handy for nooks and crannies. So uh, on the live chat, can we do it? Type it away. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Come on. Here's one for you. A Ford modification. That is a diode. Ford's diode. Okay. And that is so that... I think there was some complaints on the car whereby what is it now let's try and think how this worked i think it's when you put your high beam on oh this makes two relays go on at once so that what's it how does it do it i'm trying to think how it does it they added it anyway uh, it makes it so that both lamps come on at once i don't know if it's on you dip your headlights a dip you've got one set on yeah so it's going to be when you have high beam it keeps the dip beam on so it doesn't toggle so if i'm driving along me in it lights a, a dip on without the diode when you flash high beam the inner ones go out and the outer ones come on so it goes like that with this the inner ones even though you're high beam stay on and then the outers come on because the switch is wide on your stalk where it kills the inner ones out so this this diode makes both relays come on at once but it won't do it the opposite way around so high beam will not make your dip beam come on I think that's how it worked if you flip to high beam no yeah sorry a uh, dip beam would keep the would keep on the uh, high beam would keep on the dip beam so you'd have all four lights then when you take off your high beam you just get the middle pair if you don't have your dip beam on at all and you're flashing someone at a junction and you pull up so you in daylight your lights are off you pull your high beam it only does the outside too as you link them all together all forward flash on your high beam so this diode creates it so that all lights off high beam on only does the outside too lights on dipped dip only 
high beam on at night dip and high beam all four that's what that diode does not all cars had it there you go a little bit of it uh, Cortina information okay that module you can see right in front of you there coming out wide is the module for the automatic lights so they'll just come on when it's dark there's a sensor pad that goes in your windscreen with a self adhesive pad that's also the pad that senses rain droplets so it does both light sensor and rain and that then sends the info to this box the box then integrates into the loom then it overrides the wiper switch you can still have your normal wipers on also integrates into the light switch uh, yeah light switch but you can also override it by click, quickly clicking down on your light switch and it'll turn the auto lights off if you didn't for any reason want it to be stealth and you didn't want them on then you can deactivate by a quick push on that switch the auto wipers will only be active when this wire is live in the loom here not yet tied that up yet that comes off that wiper control box that we did and as you, as you know if you watch the build video for the wiper control box it has to be armed by my foot operated pedal so unless I press that foot operated pedal with my stalk left hand stalk control the additional stalk which I'm fitting pulled down the auto wipers are actually not engaged that stops it that gives us the option if uh, it's unreliable but they're not unreliable actually I probably don't need that feature but it's there if it's needed you might there may be times when you don't want them on so you need to have the option to uh, deactivate uh, a couple of things have to be added to make all that work this relay loom I've built here they're all num numbered up I've got a box that yeah that is the side light override relay because on Cortinas are a little bit more complex than the wiring diagram for the auto system would have us believe well not believe but it's just that that's from a pretty standard car uh, Cortinas have parking lamps which when you pull down on your stalk on your indicator stalk here it is with the ignition off I think I just explained this a few minutes ago you get your parking light now that feature wants to be active however <clears throat> by the way that they wanted you to wire the auto lights didn't switch there's two circuits left and right side light circuits so we would only have would have had one side of our tail lights on with this auto system so you've got to make it so it has uh, it supplies power to both sides of the circuit um, tail light and, and front side light indicator circuits whilst keeping them independent as well and independently fused you can't join the two sides together I wanted to keep it so that it was still an individual circuit so I had to just add on that so it gets another set of contacts to, to piggyback across that just keeps the car factory if I unplug this module and unplug the lamp unit the wiring harness reverts back to a Ford Cortina standard setup so you just unplug that and that and it would be you wouldn't have damaged your wiring harness if you will so if something went wrong um, and I had to just get these modules out then I could do that but uh, I have every confidence in it based on Ruby's it's got the same system although this is slightly improved the unit the wiper unit is very reliable and the auto light unit is very reliable that's it for now so that's how we're building it in slowly we go it looks a mess and I always say that the workbench is now the floor and now the floor is a mess it used to be the workbench a mess but I can work in this and then I have a tidy session each time obviously it gets to the point where you think right I'm, I'm, I need to I need to uh, clear up over there in that box is where I just escaped from melting in a wiring harness box that's the pinch connectors off we're going to add the stalk the second stalk controller now because it's used to trigger the uh, wash cycle and then we start harness wrapping up clear back put all the tools back clean the floor down put everything away then start again fresh that's what we're up to so we'll continue through this loom it looks worse than it is it really is not that bad 
and it's all in my head and it's all written down as well. I've been making notes as I went along. Wiring harness continues. Okay. Okay. We're going to wrap. Let's wrap this. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, another day, another dollar. The loom comes off the cleaned floor, all the tools away, like we said, start again, lift the loom up, and slot it into the clips that are on the back of the dash here, that we've um, tiger sealed new little rubber cups, anti-chafing cups, then start to slot the modules in as planned. Radio was already in, as you know, and running dash. Loom connector plugs into the back of the dash there. That's the light switch. That goes through a hole in the panel there. Down we go and down we go. And around. Heated rear relay. Flasher relay. Hazard relay that we built. Now, we missed the build on the hazard relay. It hasn't got its lid on just yet, but... We mount it to the sounding board. There's a sounding board here. So it's not really a sounding board, but it acts as one. For the flasher to make the resonating noise, so you get it echoing, and you can hear it in the car, because not only does it actually flash the lights, but it's audible too, and it's designed to be audible. And you get that nice pinging sound with these. We'll show you that later on. 
one more relay to box up there that needs its box but you can see how when we've planned it things all land luckily a little bit of luck and a little bit of measuring but most stuff lands the main trunk of the loom there and then the tails coming out at the bottom there they there each one's from each fuse box you've got two levels accessory level first turn of the key live and then second turn of the key live different ones they're, they're written on the connectors which fuse box it goes to so a for fuse box a b for fuse box b then up to six fuses one to six so that's fuse box b fuse number six we're going to add this down there now they're going to be resting above so you can drop them down through the footwell so they're going to be around this area we'll work out an exact way of fixing them later so you can see they're just dangling down at the moment you want them where you can get to them they could end up being just here because there's a lot of room just at the front we'll see indicator stalk there and straight away power to the dash we've got lamps on this switch is another refurb uh, to be refurbed it's a little bit look see that switch contact on it so that's another refurbing job we'll do that anyway illuminations on we've got the indicators about to try and go but they need a loading on the bulb at the moment there's no loading on the bulb so they won't ping but if you do put a loading on it I just use this load resistor here to simulate a bulb and we can get a flash we can get a, a Gordon on this by shorting it well not shorting it out but creating a load so there you go listen to that hey not a honey so we're starting to come to life everybody and ain't that a right noise? You see, you hear it inside the car. That's how indicators should sound on a 71 car. Nice. That's what I like. That simulates a bulb. Because we're going to be having LED uh, tail lights and indicators, you've got to create a load similar to what the a flasher unit is expecting around 21 watt bulbs because an LED tail light indicator won't draw enough current to trigger the, the create the heat in the bimetallic strip and trigger the the flashing process these work by similar to the voltage regulator there these work by um, again two pieces of different metal sandwiched together and, and when those pieces of metal get hot they bend they use the metal as the actual electrical contact so as it gets hot it curls up because of the different expansion properties of the two pieces of metal that's just physics and it bends away and breaks the contact cools down makes the contact so it just goes that that's that's your pinging noise inside a flash that's all it is and because of the nature of that um, where it pings it's almost a pinging sound the um, the metal's actually built so that it's actually under a tension physical tension too so that when it bends it it, it snaps into a, a sort of shape which they've formed as it cools down it then goes out of that shape and that creates a sort of snap action or a pinging action which echoes inside the can the aluminium can and that creates the the pinging sound that you hear but you also need to have the can connected to a, a sort of resonating plate in this case it's the dashboard if you don't if you have it floating you miss half of the noise effect so that's interesting so it has to be on that pad it has to be on that metal clip to get proper sound out of your indicator that's what the reason why the hazard light relay that I've built I'll talk about it now is also um, screwed to this because these relays whilst they won't make the same pingy pingy sound as that they'll still make a clicky sound now we've got a Finder relay there a 12 volt relay 5 amp contacts both sides so a total of 10 amp so the 5 amps on your um, we'll just check we can do that 21 watts hold on it's calculator time 
we need to work out the current for each side we're going to be 21 watts if we're on normal bulbs them load resistors so I'm going to assume the highest loading if so if we've fitted don't ask me why there's a scholar in Manta manual that's because somebody my brother found that in my coot car boot anyone got an old pull of scona wants a manual i'll send it to you free of charge is it Vauxhall cadet manta uh 21 so 42 watts divided by 12 to get your amps 3.5 amps so we're in no problem so 3.5 amps total loading if you had incandescent 21 watts so that means that that relay there can handle the power it's fused anyway because we're going to link the relay here's the tails for it uh, there's the tails pre-made tails remember we were making these tails and now they dangle just in the right place to pick up a feed we'll connect it to one of those feeds so the hazards have their own fuse okay so um total of 10 amps it can switch so we're fine with that really all that is for the hazard light a little timing board here you've seen us use these before these are off the shelf ones now you can get them in kit form and solder them up these are off the shelf a triple five although it probably isn't this is probably a, a, a copy type chip because this chips customizable on its wavelength on its waveforms it's I won't go into that but you can have it square you can have it sawtooth but um, that's just to do with um, it's a, basically a pulse generator this anyway we're using it as a as a click output, a 12 volt output, that's all that is, it's 12, 12, 12, off on, off on 12, that's all that is, and you can adjust the rate with those little screws so it can make it a really fast hazard light flash. Then all it does is it drives this relay here, and then that then, separate, completely separate wires, nothing to do with the flash, and now into the contacts, come out here, so we have a feed for them, a bulb feed for them, which we pick up off the fused feed from the hazard light, uh, sorry, from the indicators uh, few, uh, what live feed, which goes back to the fuse box, which is the indicator power fuse. So you still, this is still using the power from the fu original Ford fuse box to operate the lamps. It's just that the power to drive the flasher unit circuitry is taken off the fuse box. That way, you're not mixing and matching any power. So you've always known that if that fuse blows, and the indicators don't work you only ever have to look at the fuse in the Ford one you don't have to start saying hang on is it the hazard fuse so that's it so it doesn't interfere with the wiring again it's simply piggybacking across and as I say the little chip itself separate of course and goes into one of these auxiliary fuse boxes we'll wire it in now and test it out I haven't got a hazard switch yet but here's another interesting Cortina thing the dashboard was pre-punched out for every single type of switch including uh, export switches so some cars export cars Canada I know for sure had extra switches you could have something like a brake check switch where you pressed it down to check the fluid level in your reservoir and I believe that was here you can see that they've made the hole already for it and another lamp indicator hole which we use for the warning lamp already punched so I'll count you through the switches on this dash hazard light indicator main headlight switch uh, hey you're testing me now aren't you that's the heated rear lamp heated rear switch and then one more switch hazard light no hazard light, hazard light switch goes there heated rear switch goes there with its associated indicator headlamp switch goes there and then that is the hazard light indicator so that's them holes all used up but on this side Canadian spec wiper indicator or whatever it was pre-punched out wiper switch we need that then a spare okay so we're going to use this spare for the fog lights because we're having fog lights as well so we've got a spare hole and the hazard hole is already pre-punched even if the car your car doesn't have hazard lights it's blanked off with a aluminium trim piece and commonly known as hockey stick which fits over that whole piece behind your hockey stick you'll find a hole if you've not got hazards for you to fit them so we need a switch to go in there we can do that and we can get a Ford switch we can use a heated rear switch and just change the knob to a hazard knob look over here plenty of switches in stock 
various types we can find. Just want a two pin one, the one that they use for the heated rear, and this is it. See, that's the heated rear. Simple on off switch, Ford spec. So we get another one of those, and we use that for our hazard light controller. And all that will do is turn the power to that chip on, and then the chip will then fire the relay, which then piggybacks into Ford's loom. Hope I've explained that well best I can it gets a bit tricky so to summarize just that this little clip um, we've dropped the loom in and we're good to go with the loom up until the point where I stopped my wire wrapping which is just here so past that no we're not neat but we disconnect here dead quick and take this loom away to do phase two of the build so that doesn't matter although we have actually got stuff connected into it just checking some of the systems for example the headlight relay the wiper motor and stuff like that so you can see everything there's the rain sensor as well that's nicely located look how you can get to things on this side through the dashboard opening so again that can go inside there's plenty of room I know this because of my other cars and we can make something that will support that there that's not a problem so heated um, rain sensing unit comes out lovely as do some of the auxiliary relays that we've got they're marked up for the schematics so there everything can just hook out and then we can clip back in we'll have to make a little clip strip across here we'll build something which things can just slide onto just need a little bar we just need to make sure because we've got a steering column of course so we've got left and right access areas here's probably the best spot if I remember rightly you can get your hand right in there so there's plenty of room just uh, cigarette trays live and on nice radio as I said is running in the, in the, in the pot everything's on there cigarette light is about to go active very nicely worked out it's it's come to plan quite well and of course I mention it every time because I'm proud of it, that's why I mention it. That wheelie bench makes means you can clean the workshop, you can move it out of the way, vacuum up, clean back, or you can spin it round to work at an angle that's slightly better for that particular task that you're doing. It just makes this a more professional assembly of the dashboard. Okay, so hoping you're enjoying this. I'm really pleased with how this looks. And the idea here as well is you, you're restricted on your actual thickness of it. Okay, your bulkhead's right right up there. It's really crammed in tight against the bulkhead. This They always were. That's because it gives you so much leg room. If you look in a pre-facelift car especially, well, facelifts have got good leg room too, but the pre-facelift one, the dashboard rakes away from your feet and you've just got so much room there and that's because this dash rakes backwards and is really tightly pushed up against the bulkhead, which means that we have to be wary of that. Of course, um, all the uh, modules can come out from the front as opposed to trying to push them back against that tight bulkhead, but they will come down too, so we can go both ways with these. This is designed so that the MP3 indicator display is visible literally backwards visible by sticking your head in the footwell and looking up at it, the display you see that USB stick that's sticking down doesn't I have a right angle USB plug connector here an extension lead and it comes down this little slot and goes to the steering column so that you can push your stick into the steering column as opposed to having to go underneath however on the second slot there is micro SD card which you can get but that the idea with the micro one is is that you all your desert island records are on that and you shove it in and forget about it and if you've never got an M, um, mp3 stick with you or you forget it it revert, reverts back to the built-in um, not built-in but the slotted in micro SD card with all your desert island stuff on and you could have 10,000 songs on that. Well, it's down to the limit of the card. I think this will take up to 64 gigabyte SD card. Or maybe 128. I'll have to check spec. But certainly plenty to get you through hours and hours of driving. If you didn't have your memory flash card. Because you could have this 
there in the well I'm fitting these in the ashtray of course different ones that's a that's where we're up to just right now so at the moment I'm about to wire the hazard lights in I found found myself some little connectors some Ford connectors because the loop the loom already allows for hazards to be fitted from the factory and these are the tails for them black and green black and white they indicate left and right power lines for the indicators they're already there so when the factory read the option and it was ordered as a GXL car or an XL with hazard lights the loom would be separate and it would plug into this and there's a red power connector somewhere too for it to pick its power up, I don't know where that is, it's in here somewhere in the factory loom going up, it's around here somewhere a little red connector and the loom, the factory assembly would then plug that hazard loom in it would come with its own switch, in it went and you'd have hazard lights, so we're going to hook into the original factory connection points there's the two tails that come off they just need the Ford type connector on the end then they'll plug into there, that's one side of the hazards done then the main hazard power feed is there which goes into the flasher feed and then one more wire goes into the module and that's it we're done that's hazards for you I'll do them now and we'll get them running I'll use that I'll use that uh, heated rear switch for now so let's let's wire the hazards in and operate them because they they'll work without a load you see they don't need the load they just run off the chip, so the chip won't even know. It just, it'll just, we should get four flashing lights now. I'll do that and we'll jump straight to it. Time warp for you, then get ready for hazards. Move! <laughs> ah, Let's solder on the hazard light blue cars for the back of the switch. The sweet smell of the leaded solder takes us through. We now have a clock ticking away. It's back. The clock is back. The beast is back. Right, I'm going to run that down there to the hazard pickup point. Okay, boot on. Little protective boot goes on. Unspool so we don't get exactly the right length onto the back of the switch. I've now screwed the switch in back of the dash. This is just so we get a customised exact run of wire. Because we're going to wrap a mini loom, we're going to make our own little four copy mini loom down to going to be about there. And then the same again. Don't forget to slide your boot on before you solder your connectors. Easily forgotten. Luca blade connector. Squeeze it together. can get a crimp tool for this I believe an all, an all in one solder the order of the day and we are rocking so this is how we do it downtown with just box downtown with Matt and Justin downtown with Peter Barker downtown with the patrons downtown with the youtubers thanks again your smashing support and constructive feedback. We're hitting a 99.9% positive remark, and there'll be a few nutcases, but we've got them in hand. We're helping them, we're going to get them some help, some counselling, and stuff like that for them people. No problem. We're going to help try and fix everybody, so there's no one. We want to fix everybody, including the nutcases. Not nutcases, it's got, it's got some problems, that's all. They can't, they can't help it. And it's jealous. Down we go right now. So that's followed. Now we've got a, we already built the indicator lamp. The, just up there is the red flashing indicator, has an indicator red LED on that one. So now we've got our mini loom. We can bring it round. So we're going to wrap that loom up. We'll see you in just a sec. 
Right, I'm going to show you something real special now. You may or may not have seen these. I hadn't until I went to 12 Volt Planet and saw them on their YouTube site. If you want a better video than what I'm going to do, 12 Volt Planet into YouTube and look for these connectors. These are a not a crimp connector but works similar idea. It's a splice or book joint together connector. I want to join two wires together. How I'd normally do it, solder each one, slide some heat shrink on, push them into each other, and then solder together, then slide the heat shrink over, hot air gun on, and you're done. Now that's the normal way. We're just splicing in because we're building this hazard loom here. But these ones, get the right size, you can get three or four different sizes. Slide them in, and there's a little, like a pigeon's foot collar, you know, like a ring that you put on a on your racing pigeon. There. That solder and flux combined. This is a very high temperature heat shrink. Two indicator bands which melt as well and form a sort of indicator that it's melted. I think that's what they are. Or well, they may indicate the size. Anyway, your heat gun goes on it and it, it sh heat shrinks and solders all in one operation. Just watch. The only downside, I suppose, is the heat gun's got to keep away from the rest of the harness. So they're ideal when you're nowhere near any other cables. Still good on other applications if you can just keep away from the other cables. Right, they've pushed into each other. I'm going to zoom you now and show you it set up. I think these are fantastic. This is like the ring pull of, of uh, wiring harnesses. This is the Coca-Cola ring pull of a wiring harness. Whoever made this deserves a lot of cash because it's a fantastic thing. Let's, let's hope the camera can lock on. Is it focused or is it not? Should I stay or should I go now? We'll bring you back until we get a focus on there. You okay? Let us know when you, you can see comments in the boxes to say everything's all right. Can you just type away please now in this section of the film and just tell me, okay, apart from a little bit of tripod shake, are we okay visually? Forget about the tripod shake. You try filming it. <laughs> right. It's the best we're going to do. Heat gun gets plugged in now. Where's my heat gun? It's wrapped up because we've had a clear up. I hope you're still here. I'm talking off screen just behind you on the tripod, showing you these lovely splice connectors. There's different sizes, as I say yellows, blues, these are the reds. Here's the heat gun now, and I could really do with a little bit of metal just to protect everything at the back, but we're going to try it and just keep our eyes out. If we can push this down out of the way, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, we're in now. We can on on your heat guns get a little diverter flap that goes on them and it hooks around there handy. I have got one. I don't know where it is. Here we go. Right, let's get you in and have a look. Hopefully you could have just seen what was going on, but I'm going to bring you in up close on that hook. Soldered, all in one operation. Still be warm, so I've got to be careful. Look, it shrinks together. Solders all in one. Beautiful, look at that. You could just build looms all day with those type of connectors. Love them. So, 
yeah so that's that demoed I'm just building a loom there it is hazard loom we'll wrap that now and bring it in and get it tied up and done we'll switch on for you I'm just doing the earth tang for it I'm not going to use some of the earth. I've fitted earths throughout the loom but this is so close to a, a little mountain screw that we may as well take advantage and put an eyelet on this so solder the eyelet onto the earth for the hazard loom and we attach it to this mount screw on the headlet on the heated rear relay this saves using up some of my earth tails that I fitted so just planning out so the root of the cables is neat and that's going to fit just on that can mount for the heated rear can heated rear relay can can it's a can because it's a can because it can the feed for this I actually can't use my fused tails or the indicator feed because the indicator feed comes on with the ignition that's why Ford had a separate red wire I don't think you can quite see it yes you can just see my hand at the right of your screen I think it's the right yeah it is the right of your screen that's the hazard pickup so we need another bullet connector to get into that whoops I've just pulled the earth lead off the entire wiring of the thing I lost my sounds that's the earth we'll connect to the chassis everything's earthed on the chassis put that back on music reboots now so I need a another bullet I need to get into that auxiliary that's permanently on that it's the cigarette lighter fuse as well so we're gonna to have to mark up that the, the hazards are fused on this cigarette lighter okay so we'll do that okay Squeaky shoes on the polished floor. Earth lead, earth tank. Let's get that looking nice and neat. There we go. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Right. On. Okay, hello. We're soldered in. The plugs go in to the loom just here where the Ford hazard loom would have fitted, so we're in there, we're all ready. We're going to wrap a little bit of my super duper cloth tape on the back of the loom harness tape to make a start. We make a start where we joined up here. On we go, and now just a question of carefully loom wrapping this. So it looks like a lovely little factory loom. Around we go, nice and tight. And then a cute, bit more of a cute angle because there's not many cables, so you can get away with less tape by getting the full width down. Make a beautiful job. We'll even put a pass label on it. I'll show you one of them. Courtesy of Mark, Mark Frey. Getting down to the junction now. We don't want to interfere with that loom. We only want the sub loom so that it's detachable. Do not connect it in to the main harness other than it's splicing plugs that it uses to splice into the loom or splicing plug in, not splicing. 
lost it a little bit there. Let's just tighten that up. Let's get it right, eh? Right, pull in tight when you get those bends. I don't mean deep sea diving. There we go. There you go. Right, T junction, round the back of the T junction. Round the front of the T junction. The earth can come out at that point, but that's fine. Encase that lovely solder splicing tool we just showed you. And now we leave those ones to exit there. That just leaves the single wire, which of course you can't wrap. So you reach the end now and it's a single cable exposed, which I don't really like, but that's the length we need to get to the, the plug. It's got nothing else to go to. It's not a long run, so that's it. I wouldn't have, ideally wouldn't have liked that. tension, snap that while that's connected and you're still tensioned up. Always make a, the terminal end of it with the cloth tape so it doesn't unravel. Yes, I think the factory glued them. It could be right there. I think they did. Can't always tear these with your fingers. And Stanley blades, little cut off blades are like cigarette lighters, not of the smoke, or biros, Stanley little blades always go missing, Sharpie knives always go missing. Right, there you go. So it's plugged into the loom down here. I'm going to reroute this now, unplugging out of the loom. We'll go around to the front and test it. As part of the hazard light project, I built a little hazard light indicator. Now, here's one to note the lamps at the very top of the dash on the hazard light was a an elbow, a dog leg lamp because your clearance on your bulkhead's right here so this lamp's got to be low profile. I didn't have a dog leg type lamp indicator, they're very hard to find and uh, well you can get the longer ones like this, there's loads of these around but you can't get the dog leg versions as common. Dog leg one's about half that length, reason they have it at the top only, they don't need it down here with a the heated rear ones full length. These are off mark one escorts, I think these. But the dog leg one here for unique to the facelift, uh, pre facelift Mark III Cortina because the bulkhead top dash is right here. And if a full length one catches, so I've chopped this one down and I've made an LED indicator. I'll pull it out. Look, a little red LED high powered one, and then I've ground the face off it so it's not a pinpoint light source. So it diffuses wide, otherwise you'll have a, just a, it'd be pin, pinpointing right in the middle of the, di the light disc, the red, the red coloured light disc. It'd get like a spot effect on it. You want it to diffuse, so that's there, and that will bend right back, no problem with that. So that has a clip that secures it. We do that later when we put the finishing trim on the front. Hazard switch there, then very neat look. Tied into the loom, loom wrapped goes down, round, hooks into the existing hazard socket receptacles which are left and right indicate lines then the power feed fit does exactly what the factory would have done and hooks into the auxiliary permanent live there so the only downside I've got is an exposed single red cable so I don't like that but there's nothing I can do I prefer to get everything as short as I can but it's a shame that wasn't higher up but there's nothing to double up that with so thereby wrapping it I mean I could false wrap it with just a, an earth cable or something uh, or I could double wrap this into it and have a spare auxiliary red feed up this end that might be an idea to splice into this here with an extra red tie it together and bring it out on a female so that you've got a permanent live spare if we need one for any modules that might need it could do that, may well do it it's time now to test it out. So there's the indicator, look. There's the switch. Our 
lamps are connected there so we throw the switch ah we need to connect the power to it first hold on whoops push that all the way in right so we throw the switch sorry we'll try again ah there we go we're on that diffuse light works perfect we have hazards that's it I think that this switch here needs cleaning because look need to be in just the right position so we've got mucky contact in that switch it's probably because it's not drawing a huge current and that's why it's not arcing it across because there won't be a lot of current draw on that little triple five timing circuit which can't spark this into life but switch cleaner in there will do it fine I thought my red power lead wasn't pushed all the way in which it wasn't quite all the way in but it wasn't that it was actually the switch simply as I say uh, if you drew a lot of current through that it, it'd work but that you can see it look see we've got mucky contact in there so we'll clean that up other than that though the principle of it is fantastical right we can move on to something else I'll put the past label on it each loom that's a unit that gets successfully tested and running oh there's the clicker relay by the way that's it we put a lid on that now the lid is pre-drilled so you get the sound still you don't lose all the sound there so we put that on and we're done still plenty of noise coming out hazards hazards done oh I was gonna say about uh, test stickers that looms complete so over here's a sheet of electrical test stickers copied from Ford's design we take that off because it's a sub loom the sub looms tested each sub loom gets one of these when it's done to make it factory and looking so the main trunk also gets one on one of its tails because it's too too thick a trunk to fit that sticker there's an original Ford one these some were in green some were in black that's how Ford did it each section of the loom they checked sometimes only one I think I've already done this and there it is I wrap sellotape around them because they tend to unpeel otherwise that again these were I think they're like an Evo stick type glue held on those in fact you like a brown glue you see it when you're unpicking your wiring looms sort of a uh, slightly light tan tan color of glue that they use to put the labels on we haven't got that type of glue I just wrap sellotape around on the fine and quality sellotape not the stuff that breaks down over time the decent stuff that's it someone's going to suggest me an adhesive it'll work aren't they hazards then nice time for another job let's move on Green man on a day like this. Today the daddy, today the teddy bears had the picnic ice cream van. Mmm, ice cream. What are they, it's chucking it down. It's freezing. They're crazy. I never worked it out. Did that happen at you? Remember the summer of 1976? All dusty and dry. Then you wanted the ice cream man. Screwball. 99. What else? Come on. Uh, Fab FAB lolly. Dalek. Mint ice cream. Dalek lolly. Yes, please. Down to the spa shop. Down the dusty country lane where I grew up. A spa shop at the bottom in the village. Middle of the village. Red phone box. Just cross over the road. Spa. Top deck. Shandy. Gobstoppers. Aniseed. Army and Navy tablets. Rosy apples. Wow. Blackjacks. Half penny sweets. Spend your pocket money. Today's the day the teddy bear had his picnic. What's it doing? And then you always wondered. Then it had rained and the ice cream man had come and you wonder why. You wonder why he's out there. It's just raining. There's no one going to buy any ice cream van. Ice cream van. <laughs> With switch cleaner. Perfecto.
just squirted it in and just worked it. it didn't take the switch apart it's riveted so I poured it full of switch contact cleaner special stuff contact called contact cleaner and spray it in operate the switch a few times and it's on the money every time so we're done that was a it was all corroded you could see the corrosion on it actually and all muck was dribbling out of this switch so we service every item as we go hazards then moving on now for sure hazards all done well i can is it all right if i just check how bright it is in in the lower light please if, that, if that's all right on the live chat well, everyone ask a question on the live chat chuck your answers in please live chatters youtubers this, this evening can i turn the lights off in the workshop so type away yes you can please or no you can't okay we are bright we are nice Oh, yeah. Just please. Just yes, please. Isn't this not... Is this exciting or not? That's not the right time. I haven't set the time on the clock yet. And I should have done, really, because we need to be monitoring that. It's ten past four. Not far to adjust, but I don't think I'll be able to get my hands in to turn it. Oh, I can just about do it. It's not got it just a knob, but I can do it. Ten past four. I'm going to leave this on. Oh, hard about the knob on the end. Oh, God. Anyone got a knob for me? I'm not going to say I need a knob. Whoa! My own will suffice. And that sounds even worse. My DIY, B&Q. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> okay, here we are. Good time. Ah, ah. <laughs> I wrapped my knuckles. Ouch. Uh, we've time warped. Don't you love those time warps? I do. Um, I've done a lot of work. Come up and have a chat. We like our little YouTube chats, do we? Do we? Do we, boys? So, I left you messing around with a load of cables. And I've done a lot of work. I've saved you the pain. Hold on, the, the uh, little wheelie truck is... If it can find a cable to drive over, it will. My little wheelie truck. Right, so, uh, what we got? Lots of soldering, lots of spade connectors, lots of good stuff. From the 12 volt planet boys again and we've laid out all those modules the modules that we built on this vid this is the probably the last tech vid for the dash and um, then there'll be one more for the cruise control and then part uh, 34 of the car, actual car build will bring the elements together in one film in com combination with mechanics and stuff like that so that it's not tech heavy in just one film hope you understand the reason in there. This standalone video closes and comes to an end now. It's running about an hour and a half, probably. Very hard for me to know when I've got an actual two hour film. I mean, I try and do it about one and a half hours, but it's very hard for me to know when there's enough footage to start saying, right, let's wrap. You kind of like have a little mental note up there. But I soldered, I heat shrinked. I got all those modules, so you had the um, auxiliary warning module, you had the wiper system, you had the auto wipers, the rain sensor. We needed the interior light system to work, so the ignition off gives you interior light. Uh, as soon as the ignition's off, then out in the door, the delay continues. Igni uh, light off when you turn the ignition on, that kind of thing. Uh, interior light system. Obviously, you saw the MP3 on the earlier video. There's other modules too, we've got hazards. I think we've just discussed the hazards. But all the modules coming together now and, and closing the show, an extra stalk as well. I've not quite finished it, but there's enough for us to close the show. And you'll see the completed unit in later films. So let's go over to the bench. We'll switch on, let's see what happens. I'm sure it'll work. Approaching the bench we go, and we had to work out which module would be best suited in which place bearing in mind the limited clearance i discussed 
So this is how it's laid out. Each relay in each module gets its code number, which, which refers back to our schematics. Okay, so that's what them numbers are. As we pass you around nice and slow. One from question from Cider Andy, why use the bimetallic flash? I think he answered his own question. Ping, ping. It's very easy to change it out, dash out. You can get it for there and unclip it if it failed. They are renowned for failing. However, that said, Swamp is still going good. Hazard module, chime module, we've got all sorts fitted. Dash in there and some switches on. Look, we, we can start by powering up the system and seeing what we've what goodies we've got fitted. You can see the immobilizer flashing down there. That's wired into the system. You can see two control stalks, just one hiding just there, for the uh, wiper control and for the cruise. You can see a foot pedal for operating our various washer cycles. A bulb simulates the motor for the washer pump. Okay, there's a little bit of a, a wiring harness here to tidy up for the heated rear. That those connections fit across to that. There are two types of heated rear relay they had on cars, Cortinas. We're just going to use that type. Clock in, clock running, MP3. Parrots, Bluetooth, just about to finalise it. That's one of the last jobs. We won't be needing all these cables because that's for a four speaker system. Most of those cables there won't be used. Just the communication and power up system. Then just a set of four wires, speaker in and speaker out. The rest I'll, I'll cut back. Probably just uh, spin them back and tape them up. That little module can fit just there. There's plenty of room if you keep everything low profile. Bearing in mind that this dash was also left and right hand drive, so the, the left room, the glove box fits just there. These come on, I've tried this by going in over Cortinas and just seeing how much depth there is. Plenty there, a little bit crammed in up this end, but again, enough profile to do it. I've checked. So all the harnesses begin to get tied together now um, and, and pulled in with the wire ties so that it all locks together and you'll see various relays dotted around the place performing different jobs marked and all able to lift out and dangle through the dash to service if needed, all removable. So that's good. Right, I'm going to take you into the ignition, we're going to fire it up. Right, our first job, let's remove the Bluetooth so as not to confuse issues. Bluetooth going onto the bench. Cruise on there, we'll talk about that in a sec. In fact, Bluetooth down over here. Okay, now then, where's our ignition switch, everybody? Here it is. We need to turn that with our family silver. No key in it, so can we do it with one hand? This is the question. I'm going to go for it. No, we can't do it with one hand. Hold on a sec, let's turn the ignition on. On the tripod for you. Okay, some hands come into shop. Here's our ignition. First I'm going to demonstrate ignition on off, which will operate the interior light. So I'm going to push you back before I do this. Are you ready? Right, watch. Ignition off and on. There goes interior light. Ignition on, kills the interior light. Also got map, hang on, We've also got map reading lights. And we're now on the interior delay, volume down the radio for, let me, I'm going to boost it up. This will stay on for a while, I've got it set on a minute, so we don't want to concern ourselves with that, it does work and it does cut out. So we're not going to wait a minute, we're going to switch on all the way. We'll go to position one first. So that's accessory level, that gives you radio. Okay, so you've got everything you want there. Let's get some fun. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. FM tender. Line in. That's your line in, Jack. 
Music. Back to back to music. So that's all running. MP3 great. Just need to wire it into the uh, speaker controller from the Bluetooth hands free, the Parrot hands free. Not a big job. One more spade connect to do there. Don't worry about that. Why wow, that's not done. So first position on the key just gives us that level. It'll also give us Bluetooth because you can have that so that you could be parked up making a hands free call. You don't want your ignition on. So that comes on on the accessory line. Next click is full on ignition. The interior light goes out. We're now ready to test a few things. First thing I'll demonstrate to you, and you're going to have to just listen now. The wiper motors on the decks on the floor, and you'll hear it uh, spinning up because we're going to go for intermittent. That's not the um, auto wash cycle, it's simply an intermittent controller. And I think that if that was that way, it's up to me. You can hear. Okay, so that's now intermittent, that's controlled with our variable resistor which will be set on the column <coughs> so you can alter the interval of your intermittent. That's a straightforward timing system, all part of that module over here. So that's on. Put the stalk back into the middle, everything's off again. Now we've got our washer pedal which is modified. Well, it's not modified, but the wiring harness is interrupted so that it can control. This bulb indicates the, the uh, screen washer. Press down, screen washer on till I release. Permanently, wiper's also running. You can just hear it. Hopefully, the, the microphone's picking it up. Release, washer goes off, and now we get a slight delay for the post wipe. Any second now. That's it, end of that cycle. So that's pretty much wired that way. Simple. Washing, squirting. In combination with the heated jets that we've got there on all the time, they heat to order. We'll show you the, the heated jets. Not heated jets, but it's, it's hot water going into the jets. It's steam at first and it blows the jets clear. It's a very good system. It's a professional system used in frosty climates and dusty climates. It's called Heat Shot. I think we've mentioned it. Hold on off screen just in case we haven't. And you're talking about a pro system. Very professional. It works off voltage sense on the battery so there's only one connection. When it detects the alternators kicked in, it has to go over 14 volts when your battery Terminals go over 14, i.e. your alternator's kicked in. This has a volt sensor on it and comes online and starts heating the water up. I press this squirter and I get hot water to the jets. A lot of questions about this heat shot. How does it work? How? Why have it? All this. Winter driving gets all the bugs off the screen. No problem. Uh, sorry, uh, summer driving, all the bugs off the screen. Winter driving blows steam through your jets doesn't break your screen, <clears throat> tried and tested, pro system, it's going to be good, that just positive and negative to your battery, big thick cables, we'll have to go through the bulkhead, but we don't need to worry about that just yet, we're wash wiping, <clears throat> excuse me, we're wash wiping, we've done enough of that, we're intermittent, we've covered that, now let's do, let's, we, we want to get the, we want to talk about the rain sensing wipers next, that was post wipe, we're done. Here, in my hand, is a little sensor pad for the rain droplets and also for the automatic lights. The auto lights will come online as well when we power up in darkness. So if I cover the pad, the auto lights will come on. So your, your lights will come on when this gets dark. That's how this works. It has to be dark, then it fires up with the ignition on. Might didn't really completely cover the path, but we can do that. We get that on. Might not be able to. There we go. I've covered it. If we, we'll have to go around the front feet. Oh no, we can bring this on. Oh, I'm trying to demo you everything here. This is the centre console. Four bulbs. There's one missing. Four bulbs for your four clocks in the middle. Amp meter, voltmeter. Sorry, amp meter. Combined voltmeter actually, 
would you believe, and a um, temperature gauge, fuel gauge, oil pressure. So the automatic lights are cut in now. If you were to, it'll go through a crazy cycle. If I was to fool it that it's sunny outside, watch they'll go out or something, and fool the pad, and then they'll come back on now because they've just self extinguished. If I cover the pad, the lights will come back on. There they go. They're back on. Let's do that on screen. A little bit tricky for filming here. Off they go, cover the pad. These will go on. If I can get it dark enough. There we go. So automatic lights. You don't have to have them. If I press down on the headlamp switch, which is in the off position at the moment, but if I go down, back up, it deactivates that system till you repower the car up. So if you didn't want them on for any reason, stealth reasons, battery saving reasons, whatever it was, you can kill the automatic lights with a quick click down on your light switch. And that gets rid of those. The auto wipers are still not on and you can hear the motor isn't running and that by waving my hand in front of this infrared sensor, it senses droplets, it's all to do with mathematics prisms and optics inside here there's a gel pad there that sticks on your screen this goes in the range of your blades near your interior mirror rear view mirror it's not on at the moment it's not looking to do anything because we don't want it active it's, it's a part of a feature of the cruise system what we call the CPAC the Cortina City CPAC cruise system motorway driving is really when uh, I like using the auto wipers because the dynamics change pretty quick. Town driving, you can use them, but you mainly just go on intermittent, I think. We can if you want. We want to make the system live. We know that pulling up on the stalk gave us the intermittent. Simple timer that, just a simple intermittent time delay, nothing special going on. It's all built into the box. We know that middle doesn't do anything. Down now will arm the auto rain sensing system if and only if we press the washer pedal so the, you wouldn't accidentally arm it and have strange things going on that you don't want okay because it always does one test cycle as well when it first boots up and um, you just you, you wouldn't want it on by accident because once it's on it's on till the ignition's off so you just want to make it you're in control of it you want to say right I'm now I'm now in, in um, heavy rain conditions on the M6 going north or wherever you're going. Italy, France will probably be coming into its own when you're doing heavy motorway miles. Then I want to bring the system online. It started to rain. There's muck and stuff all over the screen. You always have Wipex in your washer bottle combined with an antifreeze solution. Basically a good quality screen wash with Rain-X in it is designed to work with this system I've got. I've pulled the stalk down, it's waiting for me to hit this to come online. I'm going to hit this washer pedal, it's going to arm the system up and then it's going to start looking for rain droppers. At the same time it's going to squirt some rain -X on the screen for me in case I forget. Although even by pressing the pedal I do get a jet, but I might only get a quick jet. This system when it comes on will, will give it two pulses of uh, jet water to the screen. Then arm the system, it'll also um, override and give some wiping action, a delay, and then a final close down. And if there's no ray, the system will go quiet, nothing will happen. So there's just a couple of things going on all in one operation here, it's quite clever. You keep your eye on the washer bulb and keep your ears out for the motor. We're going to arm, and then I'm going to simulate the rain by passing my hand in front of the sensor pad. So let's put the sensor pad in your line of sight if we can. There, so I'm going to be doing this in front of that sensor pad, it's just there. And that'll, that simulates rain, I mean it's not exactly rain of course, but it, it uh, alters the, the sensor enough to think that it's raining. And if you move your hand quick, you get the second speed coming in on the motor. You'll hear it speed up as I go faster. So nothing's happening, it's totally inactive. There's, a, there's an arm light here, I don't know if this is going to show up, it should show up. That shows that it's 
not armed or active. When that starts to flash, that's giving a command signal to the module down here to tell it to come online and start looking for rain. Okay. As I said, the reason why it doesn't come online straight away is, is because I don't want to over confuse things. I don't want stuff going off when I don't want it to. I want to be in control of what's going on. Especially with something as it's not finicky, but they can have the moments uh, where you, you don't want them active. Uh, and if it was to fail as well, now I've never had one fail, and Ruby's got one, and Ruby's is reliable. Pretty much I give it eight and a half out of ten reliability. Sometimes it will wipe when nothing, nothing's there, but I think that's the blade not scraping the screen back. All, all in all, it's very good, but I want it on when I say so. Here we go then, because uh, we've got to close the video up soon, so we're going to get out of here. I'm going to press, you'll see the bulb lights up, so we get the bulb a bit higher up perhaps. That bulb is the washer motor, so you've got to imagine that's jets of water. So when you see this, you'll see the jets of water, you'll see me just a quick press on this. If I did hold it down, it would carry on delivering. So if the system's quick pulses weren't enough, if you've been hit with a lot of grime, you can actually override it and just keep your foot down and it'll just keep on washing. The rain sensors will be on, so they may well speed up as well as you've got your foot down because lots of water starting to streak up the screen. And that's where the beauty of it is because comes into its own because it thinks, wow, what's going on here? And it's really working in conjunction with what you want. So, here we go for a cycle. Press once quickly, let's see. Washed, washed. System online. Washing and wiping, then a post wipe. One more. So it's finished, it's not actually raining. Here comes the rain, as the Eurif mix said. There you go. Can you hear that? That's one speed. Go faster. Done. Perfect. And you can see it now it stays armed for the duration and then you can pick up that light just there. I think you can. If it's still on, if I didn't want it on, but I can bring it back online without pressing the washer jet, click the stalk to the middle. It will give you a little bit of grace period. And then it's, then it's offline. And now until I pull that back, we wouldn't get it. You could go intermittent if you want. Or you can go fully auto. Perfect. And you can hear that speed up. Um, up, and then another wash cycle. You can see the automatic cycle go again. Jets on, wait, wipe, jets on, not touching this. So you can get yourself, what I found that was good, Ruby's got this as well, is I, I'll stamp it just quickly when I'm in a, in, a, in, a, in a fast lane or the middle lane, I don't want to be hanging around, I just hit it and let the, the, let the computer do the rest of the work. It's great and your hands are back on, well your hands weren't off the wheel of course, but your concentration's onto another task. It works great and it's based upon my motorway experience for me personally. It may not work for your driving requirements, but it works for the way that I, I've been driving and, and road testing that car for the last two years on, on mainly motorway miles, 22,000 miles worth, I think now, maybe more. Uh, this is slightly more streamlined than Ruby's, a couple of minor improvements. That's the rain sensor. Let's have a look at the um, audible light on alarm. We're going to switch on the side lights. Okay, now they go off if we're on auto, but I might have them on a manual override. Ignition off, and we want the car to tell us we've left the lights on if they were on override. And they will do. I'm just trying to think how this goes. Hold on a sec, I think I got that wrong. 
Oh, sorry, you have to open the door. What am I on about? Right, I turned off the ignition, I've left the side lights on, the door switch is just there, I'm going to short it with a bread knife. Okay, so you've left your lights on, turn them off, open the door, relay clicks, but nothing happens. So, lights on alarm, you see the interior lights come cut back in, so that's another system. Hazards you know about, throw the hazard switch, and you've got hazards, heated rear is not plumbed in yet, radio we know about, uh, all the modules are in, so that's. The majority of the work, the hard work done with that uh, wiper system, it's very good. We'll go around the, to the front of the car and see if there's anything else I can tell you about before we close. Okay, so up at the front there, you can see there's twin stalks just, um, just, just on screen. Two stalks, normal indicator in my right hand, the cruise control and wiper arm system here. And this is what I was doing up and down on that stick, intermittent or fully auto. These options on it are for cruise, so that's no power to the cruise at all. Up, that would be dip beam in normal circumstances if it was used in a car as it should, but we obviously we're not using it for lights. That's power to the cruise. Cruise won't come on yet till I press this and I'm going over 35 mile an hour. So press the horn, which would have been the horn. Cruise will lock on. Res uh, coast, resume. Coast, resume. Completely inactive and dead. Press the brake pedal, it'll also cut it out. So that's cruise control. Press in to increase speed. Uh, up to coast, up to resume. Down to turn it off completely. Although it will turn off by just pressing the brake pedal and then by pressing the pulling up on the stalk, it will resume back to the speed before you press the brake pedal. So it's a fully computerised system which is going to be covered in the next tech vid, which will be the last tech vid, a video dedicated just to the cruise control. We'll look out for that one soon. A couple more relays for various tasks. There's the module for the, the super duper rain sensor. Our multi-function warning lamp fits in the dash just up there. That indicates low fuel, frost alarm, frost sensor, uh, oil pressure and over temperature engine and Bluetooth hands free active ball indicator on there, indicator and fob for the immobiliser just here that's on and running harness here goes into the centre gauges, that's for the sensors for the over temperature, low fuel, low oil. Harness going up into for the roof lamp, and then that's it really. I think we're done. Cigarette lighters active, ashtray there, illuminated wiper there, override lamps of course. Lighter just popped out. Lighters online. So we're done. We're good. And we're going to call it a day for this part of the film. Okay, so that's how far I got with all the tech stuff. Quite pleased. I'll take you just round one more time around the inside so you can see how the modules have just about crammed themselves in, but we've done good. This took about a week to do. I tried to get it as neat as I could using Lucar connectors, bullet connectors, proper fuse boxes, all labelled up. Each system's got its own fuse just coming up to the screen for you there. Bring you in a little bit closer, we'll talk about the rest of the wiring and then we're done. So modules then just dangling here, they'll go in to this area, which is loads of room here. The rest of the modules are hidden away. we we'll just discuss this. Open that. Lovely, lovely. Out we go while we're running. We've discussed this radio in depth. Wipers. Modules here, you can see the Bluetooth module that will be fitting under there. Not too sure about the Velcro. We may make some brackets. I'm, I'm not pretty, not confident about Velcro on large items. We'll see. It's not a big deal that. Soon come up with something to, to hold the modules in place. Whoops! Boof! Bang! Boof!
<laughs> so everything worked everything's reliable I do like the way everything works of course non-standard Cortina lamp because I like it because I love my matte reading lights and then MP3 nicely nestled in there wiper control modules in there Bluetooth strapped underneath radio very neat in its chassis various control modules here this is to do with getting the um, auto wipe system online and also for an interface to the stalk control so it can perform the action that I wanted it to do basically inverting the switches those read up they can come out again out the front if you needed to, to look at them for any reason we'll have foam cushion pads on everything so there's no rattle you do not want this everything's got to be thought about in terms of vibration other relays up here we've got a headlamp override relay we've got side light override relay that's the wiper slave that's the uh, hazard light unit that's the inverter for the door switches spare power fuse outlets for anything else bluetooth will be using one of these and then any, anything else that you can add labeled so you know what fuse it's connected to uh, that's the auto interior light delay adjustable with a little screw there we'll set it probably for 45 seconds it's set on the minute at the moment multifunction warning lamps nestling nicely in the scallop shape of the dash there i can reach my hand in from under the car bring it down if i had to service that um, there's an alarm system there's a mobilizing system i won't discuss that but you'll never get around it that's for sure uh, okay and then that's about it really we are covered done we've done a hell of a lot of work guys and girls out there in youtube and patreon land thanks for the recent patrons as well in november and december we gained i think a good few more lovely patrons to have you on board supporting the course supporting us as we as we mentioned um, youtube doesn't really remunerate much and we do need to keep the videos going for you it's a lot of work for me to produce the films because i have to keep setting up stopping i lose my train of thought so i have to be really uh, strict with myself about that okay but uh, thanks for the support and i hope that you you like the wiring it's going to be even neater than this because we're not quite finished but we start to draw everything together neat and tidy we document film and photograph so we know where everything is of course if i've got to get to anything and my hands are coming from the back not from here coming from the front into the back so any diagrams and any easy way of getting to the modules is essential so you need to be able to be thinking about can i get these out which you can from underneath and from the top the wiring loom itself no you can't get that out because that's fixed in but you, you shouldn't have to there's never going to be a fault in them looms it could only ever be with the modules and they all unplug on molexes anyway to take to the bench same on the wiper module the whole lot comes out to be modified altered or adjusted fuse boxes again will be mounted in such a way that you can get them to swing down into the footwell or can pass through the removed shroud of the fascia panel or the fascia panel and you'd get to the fuses that way if you wanted they could be mounted here if we want we have to design a system which will probably form some kind of bracket hanger or spring connector which holds them in place that is how i've planned the the majority of the complex systems on project bramble it does everything that i want it does it reliably and with 70s electronics no arduino a lot of people said why why not the arduino well first there's a couple of reasons i, I can't program an arduino because i don't know c plus language yet i could learn it but the time that it take me time that it would take me uh, to learn and get up to speed of arduino which is a little microcontroller by the way very popular by that time i could have built built that system hardwired it that worked and um, even if you did have an arduino you still need about four or five relays and they take up almost the, you actually wouldn't be much bigger than this anyway you might get it down to there with the advantage that you can flash program it of course to alter it as opposed to hardwiring but how many times are you going to do that not very often really a system should be designed and that should be it uh, okay if it's your profiler driver then you could argue you could have a software to profile it to different drivers taste but i doubt that very much especially 
that most of my stuff's adjustable on variable resistors and no one else is going to be driving the car if we're building to order a car to order then perhaps it may be an advantage to think of an arduino to run these kind of systems but i wouldn't like to try and um, do it with to do everything including wipers i really don't think that it was worth the time and also a little ocd thing of mine is that i would be thinking that i'd hardly use the potential of the arduino and it'd be sat there like a sledgehammer to crack a nut it'd be crazy an arduino just to run your wiper system ah, i don't it's not for me this way it's modular things unplug things are broken down into separate systems and you always have to have the wires there's no way even an arduino won't get rid of cables it won't get rid of switching heavy current and relays and most of this this is wires and relays it's not really the microelectronics doesn't really take up a great deal of room a couple if you added all the modules together it might be that box and a half i just don't think so for me no however i do like arduino raspberry pi and the other types of microelectronic programmable hobbyist type stuff i do like it i think i'm not knocking it. it's very good it's fantastic in fact very interesting i will get into it as a hobby if i wasn't doing this car i probably would be programming and learning c plus that's just the way that it is the led bulbs worked great in the dash the time clock's holding time good as we predicted we've actually only lost uh, what well considering i had the power disconnected it's 11 30 five okay i think that's it we've gained what we're just over the 35 mark what we'd call that 36 double check that on the clock it could be better than i think yeah so we gained a bit look but i did lose the adjustment once or twice when a power leads come off and i've had the system completely off and then i've reset the clock i've not been going like ocd on the clock when i've been doing this build i can look at that later but i do believe that, that clock is gonna uh, i think it only gains four seconds a day if i recall rightly by the time i'd finished funnily enough there is an adjustment screw still accessible to it in the back of the clocks so you can get your watchmaker in there and fine tune it as we go if we had to but it's you know we spent a lot of time on that clock and a set of clocks that we did if you look at the clock build video about three videos back from this video you can still carry on adjusting it if you want i don't think i need to because i think it's right that is it so thanks for all the comments as always thanks for subscribing watching i hope you've enjoyed the tech videos they seem to have been very popular and i'm pleased about that um, I was a bit wary about posting them, but it's a whole different world than car restoration as such. You go into this sort of um, hobbyist electronics world, which has a nice crossover into the classic car world. I think it's a great little crossover point where you can go one way or the other, and that's good. So it's given me a little bit more scope and depth to the channel, as I've, I've had a chance to... Um, keep on using my electronics skills that I've learned I did do electronics from probably the age age six seven first electronics kit I think it was a Salter kit in the 70s I've been into electronics ever since and that's been my career so welding I learnt separately of course uh, you, I had to <laughs> learn a lot with welding and I got there in the end so um the next video is going to be this that's why it's over on the bench and that's actually a land rover one the ford one's a bit too complex to use the granada one it, it has um a lot of extra inputs which we won't have access to this one's very basic coast resume set speed input power input that's about it and you connect your vacuum pump to it there is a build video on this from Project Ruby, but we're going to do another one for Project Bramble. So the next tech vid you see, we'll be setting this one up. This cruise control and getting it run on the bench first, telling you how it works. It's a great system, very clever. But for now, we leave you. And it's a, a happy Christmas to everyone because we're in December. So enjoy your break. Enjoy 
seeing your family wherever you go wherever you get up to enjoy your break your christmas break we'll see you in the new year over and out now from pete c cuts in city comment like and subscribe i believe there's a notification bell down there somewhere uh, i didn't even didn't even know about it uh, ding ding on that and um what can i say it's been a great year for all your supports particularly my patrons who joined really has helped the patrons have helped get the youtube videos more consistent and coming at you faster of course no youtube would have been no patron so i thank youtube because you, without youtube no patrons patrons then supported youtube so you've all helped you've all been with me and i hope to have filmed it where you think that you were here with me in the car yes we've got the tripod and we've took the advice we, we thank chilch for that very good and it's been great it's been a good year we've done really well this time last year we were only beginning to build the front end of the car look back through the videos and check the dates done a lot in a year time management we've kept ourselves fit and healthy too yes there's been some mental low low points i do get uh, anxiety sometimes i do get depression sometimes i have to battle through it i've always had it um don't know why it just comes out of nowhere the black dog as churchill called it and i'm sure it gets a lot of you out there as well we all try and hide this but it's best to talk it through and it's not often affected my filming schedule where i've been too depressed to switch the camera on it's never got to that point the mornings were always the worst by midday i normally snapped out although i never like that word snap out i try to talk it through with uh, trusted friends and if need be counseling um, and try and get through it with uh, sport and fitness something that i wasn't really interested in until I, i've been swimming all my life but i'm now into uh, running which i found fantastic so uh, that helps uh, talking it through and exercise really do help with depression uh, even if it's just a walk in the, the woods or anywhere you can find if you're near the country if you're not near the country perhaps uh, just a, a walk out there's, there's usually some trees somewhere we hope anyway there should be 75 million more by the way they're going i hope they do plant all those trees that they say they're going to do that would be great i think we really need to um, get back just connect with nature a little bit more maybe not go over the top and be eco warriors although i'm nothing against that but i think we should just be a little bit more aware of our um surroundings in terms of nature and stuff and just give it a little helping hand uh, maybe if you've got a garden make a little hole in the bottom of your fence panel for hedgehogs to get through because they're in decline and they're, they're trying to get from garden to garden and they're struggling because of the fences and stuff so i've got some holes in my fence and uh I had six hedgehogs in this year. I've never seen them before. Well, I hadn't seen them for about five years. And then a big gang of hedgehogs turned up. I was made up. I haven't mowed my grass this year. I've left it go. I've planted wild seeds. I try to do, do a little bit. That helps as well. Gardening's a good thing. I don't do a lot of gardening, but I'm out there putting bird feeders up and stuff. And that helps with the depression too. Just getting out of yourself a little bit. It's a tricky one. I know it's tough for you. If you've got it as well it is hard work um but you've got to just try and, and find the system to deal with it and let it go through and i mean we can have another video all about that but um there's been testing times this this year when you've got a project this size and you're trying to deliver it on a target date i don't have to deliver it on a target date but i like to because it means that i can move on to something else i wouldn't want this to drag on it's not how i do things i'm not against anyone's project that's long term of course take 10 years take 20 years it's it's uh, it's fine if that's that's your life your car your cash that's how you want to play i'm not knocking people at all who take the time on the restorations you could argue that it's hair and tortoise and they come out with a better quality car but it's not about that for me it's about getting out there a quality neat job it's products delivered on time i know it sounds corporate now products delivered on time project managed looked after myself as well at the same time the best that i could so that i didn't run myself into the ground was listening to my my body when i had to and saying it's time to give yourself a little pause sometimes i look rough on the films and i think yeah you need a little break i've took those breaks recharged talked it through with people 
make sure I've kept in touch with with people who, who can help me with uh, any feelings that you're negative feelings that you're having find the people to talk to that work for you and have a good moan to them and keep fit get running or swimming or walking brisk brisk walking jogging connect with nature a little bit these kind of things help and there's, and there's lots more as well that's the bramble ramble you ask for i want to leave you on a good note everything can be fixed everything can be done and that's what we do we'll see you in the new year all the best pc cortina city signing out lovely dash lovely support youtube patrons i thank a lot of you thank you very much good night have a good christmas and new year we're out of here we'll see you soon Thanks, Chris, for the calendar. Great. Another one there. Great. Great calendar. Great calendar. Great calendar. Great calendar. Great calendar. Um, politi politically correct. Great. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, no problem. No problem. 70s calendar. That's the real. Let's just take a, a little look. This is uh, for historical and educational purposes. We study different art forms over the centuries. And this case the 70s this would be like a motorist calendar okay and this is from a good friend Chris 70s look at that bag look at that old door can we dare no nope, we can't go any further than that is this allowed do I get banned for this for for showing a, a, a sheepskin rug is that allowed someone's leg is that allowed is that implying something that I shouldn't be but cigarettes Ooh, ooh, it's a great calendar, 1975. Oh, Chris, Chris, oh my God, he's going to kill me. There we go, put the right way up, look, look at that. How great, isn't that a honey? Hang on a sec, okay, I'm trying to, ain't that a honey? Now let's have a little look at this, come on, this is the little bonus clip at the end. Hands on your knobs there. A one in nine, very dangerous. N for no, don't do it. Lady getting aboard a boat. Traffic junction. Can't really see the correlation between what car we got here. Now that'll be a real test for you guys out there. Three clocks in the middle. What have we got? A man's face above a door. Sort of symbol of unity there and there. A nice lady having a picnic. A motorway sign. No managed motorways in those days. Nice lady posing there. Nice slice of uh, lemon in a uh, refreshing, uh, fizzing, cool glass of our white's lemonade. Our white's lemonade. Our white's lemonade, darling. Our white's lemonade. That's not, that's beer. No beer in that glass, no, some olives, glass of wine, put your car keys out, that's not an iPhone, that's a, now what is that, little wallet perhaps, thank god it's not an iPhone, we don't want any of them, looking around without trying to reveal something which could get me in trouble, is that a pack of disposable cigarettes, yes it is, we are not endorsing any of these products, it's so, so strict now, and people want to, there's the wallet again, Do you like those shoes? And this is not, you see, because otherwise. Whoa! <laughs> hey! Whoa, whoa, 70s there. <laughs> yeah. Girl casually flip. I mean, to see. You have a look at that for a sec. No, it's actually legal. It's actually, no, nope. that's a trim phone. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yves Saint Laurent. Perfume. Look at that built-in radio there into the headboard. Nice. And then again a pack of the in a, in a crushable pack. Remember crushable pack. Some orchids, some legs, and no, we're we're good to go there. They can't touch us on that one. 
as MC Hammer said, you just can't touch this. Are we clean? And you're good to go. Good, clean fun. Okay, so this, uh, the luggage, an advert for luggage perhaps. No, it's not really, but <laughs> there's nothing wrong with how low she is blending into that chest. She's like the girl out of uh, Who Saw Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels when she, uh, the first one. Not, oops, not when... Not snatched. The first one, she blends into the chair and then get, comes alive with a Bren gun. Before a wreck, Chris's calendar. I'm gonna... <laughs> it's still alright, I promise you, it's still alright. Right, no wonder. That angle is not gonna work. That's a bad design, that, Pete. Ah, it's bad design. Ah, there we go. There you go. That's bad design, that hook. Ah, I've tripped over Henry. Good night. Supposed to wear a box like this. I might feel like a tortoise. Help me. Help. I think I'm melting. <laughs>